All right, everybody, uh, moving on a little bit. Okay, we talked about the voltaic cell and the fact that uh, chemical energy is going to be used to create an electrical current spontaneously by having a metal oxidize and give its electrons through a wire to a connected uh, cathode, which then would be reduced. Um, well, the, the ions in the solution would be reduced onto the cathode. That would produce an electrical current spontaneously and allowing us to do a job, okay, and that, that would be natural. That would be something that would be spontaneous. If we want to, what we can do is do the reverse, and the reverse is when we take electrons and we force them into a uh, uh, system to cause a chemical reaction that not normally would take place, okay, and this is called the electrolytic cell. Okay, so electric electrolytic cell is when you force a non-spontaneous reaction to occur, okay, and it was, this can be done in a variety of ways. There's different applications of this. We're going to just do two quick ones, okay? And one of them is call, called uh, the electro, electrolysis of a fused salt. And fused salt um, typically means melted. So if we take a melted salt, okay, and typically this is going to be something that's very active element, so, so a salt, which is an ionic compound, and we want to electrolyze it, we're going to take this salt and basically uh, separate it or decompose it back into its original elements, now, normally in nature, this wouldn't happen. For example, if you took sodium chloride, common table salt, normally you wouldn't decompose that back into sodium and chlorine gas. Uh, generally speaking, sodium chloride is stable. So it wouldn't go and, you know, go backwards per se. But we could force um, uh, compounds to do this and then collect their, you know, elements when they're alone and use them for various things. So that's what we would do here. Okay, so basically, we're going to use an input of some type of power source, an input of electrons externally from the outside to force a non-spontaneous reaction, reaction to occur. So you can think of this as being endothermic, but we're using power on the outside. Now, this power source could be a battery. It could be, you know, electricity from the wall, from a power source. It could be any of this kind of thing. All right. So basically, electrical energy from the outside is going to be used to create chemical energy. Okay, and this is going to be the reverse of the voltaic cell. Okay, so just so let's say we had a setup like this, and this is the basic setup of the cell. Okay, and we're going to have um, a single cell this time, not the double cell. So this is going to be a single cell, and let's just say I have sodium chloride as a liquid. Now again, there's no water here. So in this. We're not even going to call this a solution. This is really a, a liquid sodium chloride. So it's very, very hot, which means it's here um, at 801 Celsius. Okay, so it's melted in here. Okay, it's got a power source here. Okay, I'm going to use this as, call it as an electron pump or a power source. Uh, it also could be used as a, a battery could be used to power this. Okay, and on every battery, as we know, there's a negative terminal and a positive terminal terminal and we're going to hook the negative terminal to one piece of metal here and to hook the positive to the other piece of metal okay and we're going to use for this particular application we're going to use platinum electrodes we're going to use these piece of metal are going to be made of platinum now we want them to ma be made of a metal that's not going to react that's what we want here so platinum is an unreactive element and you know we, you may not need to know that however just to show you that you know these are just pieces of metal that are in the nerd Inert means unreactive. Okay, so these are going to be unreactive metals. Okay, now what happens with this pump? And again, just like any pump will do, pumps. What is really what? A, what what's the purpose of a pump? A pump takes material from one area and forces it to go to another area. A water pump would take water from one area and move it to another area. An air pump would take air from one area and move it to another area uh, by force. Okay, so what happens is is out of the negative. Electrons are going to flow out of the negative in this direction. Okay, and what they're going to do is the power source is going to push. So this is going to be the push end. We're going to push electrons and have them collect on this a negative electrode here. So this is going to be a negative side of your battery because it's connected to the negative. And we're going to pull on the other side. So it's a push and pull. And again, a push and a pull is forced. Right? Anytime you push something or pull something, you're doing this by force. So we're going to push electrons into this side, and we're going to pull them back from the other side. So since electrons are moving away, that's going to be the positive side. Electrons are going in, that's going to be the negative side. All right. So what happens in this case is that sodium ions that are free to move around in here are going to move towards the negative side of, the negative side of this, 
and the chloride ions are going to move towards the positive because they're attracted to it. Again, there's more, you know, there's positives here, or there's positive here, and that's where the oxidation and reduction is going to go. Now, if sodium ions are going to go and get an electron, they're going to have to go over there and become reduced, right? Because they're going to grab an electron. And anytime you gain electrons, you're going to be reduced. And, and, and chloride ions, which have electrons here as the minus one, are going to have electrons pulled from them, okay? And they're going to become chlorine gas, okay? So you're going to get these, these ions are going to be migrating towards the appropriate cathode and anode. All right, so the anode in this case is going to be, is going to be oxidation because electrons are going to be pulled by force away from uh, whatever is negative. And this side is going to be the cathode because, uh, the, you know, electrons are going to be added to whatever is going to be touching the cathode. Okay. So basically, um, on one side of the anode, you're going to have chloride ions, which are going to be attracted to the positive anode. Okay. And have electrons pulled away from them. Now think about this. If electrons are being pulled away and they're losing electrons, there's your oxidation. On the other side, uh, sodium ions are attracted to the cathode and they're going to pick up electrons. And when you pick up electrons, that's reduction. So this would be reduction, but this would be oxidation. So it's important to know. So oxidation always takes place at the anode. Cathode takes place reduction at the cathode. All right. So what's the reaction to this? Well, chloride is going to go and become chlorine gas plus two electrons. These two electrons will go back to the battery, back to the power source. Okay. And, and then you're going to create, guess what you create here? You create chlorine gas. So you start getting bubbles of chlorine gas being produced every time chloride touches the anode. Okay. On the other side, sodium is going to take electrons, two electrons. Okay. And that's going to become uh, two sodium. Okay. Uh, and then so this is going to become sodium metal and um, sodium metal is going to begin to coat this cathode going to start to collect on the cathode. It's going to stick to the cathode as you get more sodium metal. So this becomes pure sodium metal. Now, pure sodium metal and pure chlorine gas don't exist in nature. We force this to take place by forcing electrons into sodium and pulling them back from chlorine by force, electrolytically. Okay, so the overall balance reaction, if we add these two reactions together, again, the electrons will cancel because you're adding them in, taking them out. Okay, so basically you're going to get 2 Na, was 2Cl is 2Na0 and 2Cl0. You'll see the 2 plus here and the 2 minus here will cancel to make 0. Okay, and these are active nonmetals and metals, which we then can collect. We can isolate them, pretend, collect them, and then prevent them from reacting. And then we can kind of hold on to these native metals for other purposes. Okay, so basic summaries here. Electrons are pumped uh, out of the uh, negative and pulled back from the positive. Okay, and pure active metals and nonmetals can be produced in this way. We can do this with any really compound uh, with electrolysis. One thing you want to note, however, is that the sign of the anode and the cathode switch when compared to the voltaic cell. Okay, in the voltaic cell, I mean, you may want to make a little note. In the voltaic cell, okay, the anode, okay, was negative. Well, sorry, was negative, and the cathode was positive. These signs are going to switch because you're forcing the electrons in reverse. All right, so to repeat, okay, the, the anode is positive in the electrolytic, but negative in the, ele sorry, positive in the voltaic, okay, voltaic, the anode's negative, but in the electrolytic here, the anode's positive. The cathode is positive in the electro, uh, in the voltaic, but it's negative in the electrolytic, okay, because you're forcing it to go in the opposite direction. Okay, so it's important for you to know and make sure that you, you remember that. Again, anytime you're reversing nature, you got to switch your signs. Okay, so that's the deal. That's what we're doing. Um, uh, all right, so next next uh, uh, application is very something very similar. Okay, uh, this is called electroplating. All right, and it's the same general idea except you're doing something slightly different. So electroplating really is coating, or we call that a plating. When you take a coating. So if you have a coating and then you put a different metal on top of that, uh, that's called electroplating. So you can think of it like, well, you know, I have a piece of metal like this, right? And I want to put like a different metal on top of that, say copper. Okay. And copper has a little bit of a red color. So I'll use red. Okay. So if you want to have a metal and you want to put a, 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 a coating of copper on top of that, okay. And then you want to put another uh, play, uh, you know, layer, layer of metal on top of that. You can actually layer this with different metals. Those are called plating. So when you plate something, 
uh, you do this. Now, why would you want to do this? You do this to resist corrosion. Okay, you want to prevent things from rusting, or you want to prevent things from rotting or breaking down, or you want to make something look nice like jewelry. So you can take a very inexpensive piece of metal and you can coat it with gold or silver to make it look nice. Okay, or you can improve the electrical conductivity of electronics. You can take, you know, uh, you know, um, nickel, or you can make things out of tin and lead, uh, which are conductive, and you can coat them in gold. Or you can coat them in in, in different metals to uh, improve the electro electrical conductivity. Um, of that object. So there's many times we want to do this and there's many applications of this, but it's quite easy. So let's just say uh, I use the same idea. And again, I'm showing a little different type of a battery here. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, sometimes in electronics, we use these alternating, uh, uh, alternating um, lines, these long lines and short lines. Okay. So this would be a power source. Again, this would be a power source again. Okay, and what we do is the little line is your negative and the big line is your positive typically. So again, we're doing this the same thing. Now in this case, what we're doing is we're taking a spoon or this little spoon here or a little decorative item or jewelry. You can make this a necklace or it's a ring or whatever you want to do it. Okay, and you can take this and what you want to do is the part that you want to plate, which means the part you want to coat with the metal of your choice, you want to make that the negative part of the battery, the cathode. You want to make that the cathode. So this is going to be the part that you want to plate, okay? So why do you want to do that? Well, electrons, you want to make this the negative side so that electrons will coat this whole piece. So the electrons will come out of the power source. Again, this is your push side. This is your pull side, okay? So electrons are going to go back to the battery this way. They're going to come out of the battery this way. The battery is your pump, your power source, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to fill this beaker here with a metal that you want to coat or the metal that's the coated metal. So you're going to take that and you're going to take that metal and you're going to take it and you're going to put this in here. Okay. And what you'll simply do is turn the battery on. And what's going to happen is these silver ions are going to go and they're going to jump on the spoon and they're going to be reduced. They're going to take an electron. And when electrons are added to something positive, they will become zero. And zero is silver metal. So this will start to coat in new silver metal and make it look nice and bright and shiny. So this will end up becoming nice and bright and shiny with silver. Okay. Now on the other side, you're going to make this anode a piece of silver metal, like a bar or a chunk of silver. And what's going to happen is that silver zero, AG zero, is simply going to be oxidized. You to have electrons pulled from it and it's going to fall back into the solution. So really you had this rotation or this alternating uh, moving, uh, moving of, 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 of silver ions. They're going to be jumping on the spoon while they're jumping off the silver bar. Jumping on the spoon, jumping off the silver bar. So again, you're basically taking silver off the bar and putting it on the spoon, but you're doing this electrolytically. Okay. So to summarize, anode is going to be a, the anode here is going to, be, going to be a piece of silver zero. Okay. Silver zero again is metal. Okay. Uh, the electrons get pulled from that metal, and when electrons are pulled away. That's going to be an oxidation. Okay, oxidation takes place at that point. The anode is going to eventually dissolve to make more uh, Ag plus in solution. That's going to be used for the spoon. Okay, so Ag zero goes to Ag plus uh, an electron. Okay, and that's going to be your oxidation. Okay, important at that side. So oxidation takes place at the anode and it stays all the time. Okay, the part to be plated. Okay, is going to be made the cathode. The spoon gets coated with Ag metal because. Again, here's the, 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 in this, this is going to be in the solution. This is your AQ ions. They grab the electron from the power source, becomes AG metal. That is the AG metal that sticks to the spoon. Now, you can keep this running for however many times you want, however long you want for time. Okay, and you can create a thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker coating. You can get to be really thick if you want to. It's up to you. Okay, so you're going to start with a solution of AG. Okay, thicker deposits are produced with longer times. Okay, and again, multiple layers of different metals can be applied uh, depending on what you want to do here. So that's how you electroplate something. You can do this with jewelry. You can do this with conductivity. So this is done in the electronics industry, industry all the time. You can plate all types of metals. You can plate gold. You can plate gold, silver. You can plate tin, lead, copper, nickel, all types of uh, chromium. All types of these things can be, can be plated. Okay, again, the main idea, okay, is that the anode is the place of oxidation. The cathode is the place of reduction. And again, the part that you're plating needs to be made the cathode so that you can gain electrons and be reduced. All right, so that's the big deal on this. Uh, again, uh, you may say slightly different versions of this, but the concepts are all the same. 
just be able to write your half reactions. Okay, and that should end it. Uh, go back if you have to watch again and have a good day.